Well, today I'm going to show you how to process a raw image out of a camera that is capable of shooting in a raw uh, format uh, digitally. Now, I use a Canon camera and I'll just open one of one of these uh, folders of mine. I'm working on a Mac and uh, I've chosen this particular photograph and you'll notice here from from the name you'll see the extension says CR2. Now this is the Canon RAW format for a Canon and I've got one of the older Canons. I've got a Canon G15 um, which is quite a number of years old but still takes very good photographs as you can see here. These are all the raw images that you can see in front of you. So I'm choosing this particular one and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to open it in Affinity Photo. So here we go. We're opening it in Affinity Photo right now. There we go. Now you'll notice because it's a raw image it has come directly into the develop persona which is at the top of this page these icons up at the top you'll see the the third one from the from the left is the develop persona now when you look at this image a lot of people will say to you oh this is a brilliant image it's fantastic but there's a few little problems with it we've got this little distraction down here in the corner that we're going to remove later on. We've got that person over there, we're going to remove him and that little object over there. But apart from this it's fine, it's not too bad. Unfortunately we can't, I don't want to remove these ropes. Uh, they are a bit of a distraction. I can do it but it will change things. I mean I could, I could try it you know, if I had to take it up like this, then I would need to bring it in from this, this sort of direction to be able to cut out the ropes and the distractions down in the left-hand corner. But I would lose all this water here in the front, so I've decided I won't do that. I'm going to stick with what I have. It looks like it's actually gone and, and chopped it off. So we'll just return it to how it was. All right, so we're still in the develop persona. And what I want to show you is my process. In this develop persona, you've got a whole lot of action going on here on the left-hand side. So we're going to start off with the basic setup. Now just watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to be merging two images together because this sky is too beautiful to lose and at the moment it's there but nothing much is going on but watch the magic that happens when I play around with these these sliders now the, the exposure is fine but it's not good for the sky so we're going to take the exposure down for the sky now immediately you'll start to see an improvement all right, but now we've lost exposure in the front, but that's fine. It's not a problem. Let's um, let's go to our brightness. Let's see now. When you pull up the brightness, you you start messing around again, but you you're bringing back exposure. But it's not the very best way to do it. So let's just keep let's let's keep it at at, at zero. And we'll go to contrast. It's the sorry, the contrast. We push the contrast up just a little bit. You don't, you don't go wild with this because then it starts to look artificial and it doesn't look good. Now already we're starting to see lots of contrast in the sky. So we're wanting some contrast. We're going to go for clarity. Now watch what happens when you push the clarity up right to the edge. We're going back a little bit, and we're going to stop at about 37 there we go it brings clarity in the image you'll see what's going on we're still not finished yet 
Um, we want vibrance because we want a lot of these little colors to come out. So vibrance, we're going to push vi vibrance up. Don't go anywhere near saturation because your saturation might look if you push saturation up then the colors get a little bit ridiculous so you don't want that okay so our vibrance is up to about 18 percent that's fine now remember we're exposing for the sky but now we can correct a couple of things let's go down to shadows and highlights now when you drag the highlight slider up watch what happens to the shadows sorry i'm sorry i've done the wrong one the shadows one watch what happens in the shadow in the in the shadow areas now you're bringing in light you're bringing light into the bottom part of this image but that's fine highlights we can dial down a little bit well, we can, we can, let's just leave them normal. Highlights, I'm going to leave normal. We're going to go, okay, so we're doing all right so far. I'm still not happy with this, this area, but we're going to fix that in a little while. Um, let's go to the lens tab, and you'll notice we, uh, there's a lens correction. It's just automatically applied. We, we're going to apply a post-crop vignette. We're going to remove the lens vignette, and we're going to defringe the image. It actually takes, takes the fringy color off, because if we enlarge, you'll notice on a lot of the edges, they get a fringing, a little, like there's a color on the fringe, which isn't very nice, and it's also chromatic aberration comes in so let's click on that you will see there's a chromatic aberration correction happening and that'll also help with this fringing as well i think it should let's have a look let's just let it go there we go it's actually hasn't fixed it a hundred percent Oh, it actually has corrected a lot. Okay, so we just zoom out and out again. So now we're going to go to our um, we're going to re remove the complementary hue. It's all good, and everything else is fine. Let's go to the details. We want detail refinement. Now, when we refine details. Just have a look at this now. Um, we're going to just drag this up a little. There we go. Now, when I pull the radius up to about 10%, that's as far as I'm going to go, but I'm going to pull the amount up quite high. You watch what happens. It does quite a decent sharpening process. If I, if I drag it, oh, the 88 is a little bit much. Maybe with the 85. You'll notice it's really sharpened everything beautifully. We'll just zoom out again. Come on. We want to zoom out. There we go. All right. So now we're basically done with this one. Now remember, we want the sky to be. This is. We've, we've only set this up for the sky. So let's say develop. We develop the image, it's developing it from a raw image into something that we can use. It's now still in a 16-bit format. Remember this, that JPEGs are always 8, eight bits. The JPEG was created for online, uh, online uh, display. If you want to work on an image, you need 16 bits or more. Anyway, now we're happy with that, and now we're going to we are going to uh, duplicate the layer over there on our right hand side. Hold down the Command or Control key on Windows, Command on a Mac, and then press J. Now you've 
we have um, we we have made a duplicate. Now we're going back back into the develop persona one more time. And now we're going to bring our exposure up a bit. We're just bringing the exposure up. Everything else will be the same. We're not going to change anything. You, you notice we have brought the exposure up. We can also play a little bit with the black point and brightness messes things up a little bit. We're not going to do, do, do that. Now we're going to go back down to shadows and highlights and see what we can do there. Highlights, if we do that they blow out which isn't good. We leave highlights alone and we just go down to shadows. Now notice what it does. It just lifted those shadows. See these shadows? You lift them just a little, just a touch. And now you bring back detail in the shadow areas. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to take the saturation down a little bit. No. Not too far. Actually, if we keep it at about normal saturation levels, it's very, very nice, but it might just be a little bit too much. There we go. We'll take it to about minus eight for saturation. All right. So there we go. Uh, the white balance introduces more warmth if you go on that side. It's more yellow and that's more blue. But I think that our white balance temperature, our temperature is fine. And I think we okay for that now. So we develop it. So we are developing this image on top of the other image. Let's see the difference. Notice there is a difference, a subtle difference. You might be saying, oh, this is even better. Well, we want to brighten the bottom part of the image in the shadow areas. That's why we've done what we've done. All right, now we are going to we are going to blend this top layer that says background. <laughs> we're going to we're going to blend it with the bottom layer, and we're going to make a mask. When we come down here to the masking area, we add a layer mask. We select it, and then we grab the um, gradient tool. We select that as well, and we go up to the kind of gradient that we want will be a linear gradient. Um, I think we you hold down the shift key and we drag upwards. Let's see if this is working. It hasn't actually done a very good job. We want this to be black. We don't want a gray. We don't want gray. We want it we want it better black from black to to uh, white. Um, I don't know if we've actually got this thing right. You see, it's lifting. It's lifting it up, so we can drop it about over there. We drag this middle little line upwards. So the bottom part of our image is being brightened, but gradually. There we go. So if we switch on, or switch the layer off, that's what we had before, that's what we have now. Just a subtle little change. We can actually even lift that a little higher, and then we are fine. Now there's still one more thing I want to do. I want to add a little bit more contrast into our, our sky area. 
I want a little bit more punch out of this sky. I want the sky to pop in a huge way. So what we're going to do is we'll go to Layer, choose our Layer tab, go down to Merge Visible. Now it'll take everything that we've done there and put it in a layer right at the top, the completed image at the top of the stack of the layers. That's what it'll do. Then what we want to do next, we want to go to the Tone Map Persona. Click on Tone Map, Map, the Tone Map Persona. Now it's going to process it. It's going to, it's going to bring everything up. It takes a little while, as you can see, it's working at the top there. And it's got a couple of suggestions on the side to get you started. They're quite radical. They're quite in your face. And I, I think that, that these are quite powerful, but they are just too much. And they have to be dialed down a little bit. So let's have a look. We want, remember, we are wanting punch in the sky. We want the sky to pop in a huge way. And this is where the tone mapping persona comes in. To add uh, something that the sky does not have. Now, as you can see now, if I click on the natural, this these colors are just too much. Everything is just way, way, way too much. So what I will do is, I'll apply it, I'll accept it, but I'm going to pull the opacity down a little bit. But we're still going to keep, see, when we, when we add in this layer and we remove it, you know, we are, we are viewing it now, the top layer, and now we're removing, we're looking past the top layer as to what we have. Now, what we're going to do is we, we're going to mask, we, well, we're going to bring this down a little bit to about 60%. That's fine. And then we're going to mask it again. We're going to mask this layer. We're going to block out what's happening underneath again. So we get our gradient tool again. We go linear and we drag upwards. Actually, we might have to drag down. I'm just trying to th think. Let me have a look here. I don't know why it keeps on making it gray. It should be black. And we've actually, our, our um, gradient is the wrong way around should be white at the top. So we turn it around, hold down the shift key, makes a straight line, and now we drag this way, downwards. All right, and we'll bring this down again to about there, and we'll drag that up to about there. So let's have a look at it now. See, the sky has been brightened, and it has a little bit more punch in it, much more punch. So it's a very subtle change, and that's actually quite amazing. Now, if we drag that little one down, it just becomes a little bit too much. So there we go. So we're basically ready. There we are. We are ready now. Our image is actually ready. Uh, but, you know, um, overall it's ready, but we still have to fix a couple of things. So what we're going to do, we're going to... We're going to, to clean the image up of all the little distractions. That guy must disappear, and that stuff must disappear. So let's go to the in-painting brush, which is on the left, there it is, in-painting brush, we select it, it's too big now, we take it down, and we paint over this guy here, 
just paint over him. Oh, sorry. Actually did wrong there. We have to uh, go to our layers first and merge visible. We merge visible. Another thing we can do is we're going to actually save this out. We say save as. We'll just put it on the desktop and we will call it uh, fishing village boats. There we go. On the desktop and we save it. All right, so now we're done. Right, we go back to our in painting brush and we're going to remove this guy here. Oh, it's still saving. There we go. Still saving. Not quite ready to remove this guy. But there we go. Paint on him. He'll disappear. That's the beauty of the in-painting brush. I can see his, his, his fishing rod is still there. Let's go back and remove that. There's his fishing rod. We'll just remove that. We'll go to this little con this little contraption here, I don't know why it's, what it's doing here, let's just paint right over it, and watch it will disappear, oh, didn't do a very good job, maybe we've got to go a little smaller, I don't know why it's done that, uh, we might have to just make the brush a little bit smaller, and we'll just see what this does. Let's have a look. There we go. That's done a pretty nice job. We're going to... Uh, let's go to the end. We've got a couple of other little distractions here. This is a bird flying here, by the way. It's a seagull. Here it is. That seagull. There's a guy and there's a guy, and we're going to remove them as well. Here he goes. Just do that. There we go. And this guy as well. You won't be able to even notice that there. That's a fishing rod and that's a fishing rod. So let's take the fishing rods out. That one's gone. That one's gone. This fishing rod is gone. And here's another one. There we go. And just remove the fishing rod. All right. So we are fine as far as that's concerned. There's our image. We're not going to do anything down here to the bottom. It is a bit distracting. But that'll be fine. Uh, we're going to remove this motor vehicle up at, up, up at the top. Left. I don't like it there. And that little thing over there as well is going to be removed. So let's remove it. Got a bird sitting on it. Does a very nice job. Let's remove this vehicle here and let's see what happens. There's a guy standing next to it. There we, there we go. Did a very nice job too. You see? Yeah. All very good. All right. So there, our image is complete. It's all ready. Now we save it one more time by pressing Command and S to save. And if we want to sign our image, we can, but we're going to resize it for Facebook or Instagram or wherever. We're going to resize it. We don't want people getting the full resolution. We want to resize it so we're going to take it down resize from uh, the longest side is 4048 pixels across so we're going to bring it down to 1200 it'll be 180 dpi we're going to change the resample value from bilinear to bicubic there it goes bicubic always maintains sharpness if you resize with the other one 
it's going to put a little bit of a softness in and I don't want that so let's resize there we go let's resize it you'll see down at the bottom it says 168 but that's just for our our um, our desktop that's fine so now what I want to do I'm going to sign it I'll sign it with my name I'm going to choose a certain kind of font there we go I'm going to sign it with my name it might be a bit big to start off with there we are I'm going to change the color by picking something out of the sky I don't know say something there I don't know if that's going to work uh, it's not really bright let's go down here that's better much better all right it's a little big we can take it down a little there we go and you just put your name up in down in the bottom and it's all ready now we are going to export that as a JPEG export go to file export select the JPEG option there's the sizing still in there we don't want to export with bilinear remember by cubic is how we export and it'll be 1.2 megabytes in size it's all fine and we export it to our desktop there we go desktop fishing village boats and we say save there we go that's pretty good so if we have a look at what we have now and we take out what we've done that is what we started off with and this is what we've ended up with I think it's a nice change subtle change but it's powerful and it's punchy and it's there in your face all right and there we go thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel if this has helped you